Hello? Yes? You're speaking. No, I... Oh, yes, yes. Look, uh, could I call you right back? I... No, it's not that. I... It's just not a convenient... Uh... No. Yes, I understand, but... Uh... All right. No, no, no. That's that's all right. Do you have the address? Yes, that's right. Yeah, I'll be here. Yes. Me too. Right. Hey, I know that man. Well, you have a better memory than I have. Uh, almost 40 years. 39 years. You're entitled. Hey, this is nice. You sure I can't get you? Uh... No, no, it's all right. Thank you. Well, Horst Hostrup. They still call you that? They still call you Ski? Nowadays, mostly uh, Dr. Bosky. I like Ski. Doctor? I'm a college president. No fooling. You haven't done too bad. What do you do, Carl? I'm a businessman. What kind of business? It's a conglomerate, AGR. Oh, that's the big leagues. <laughs> the horse Hostrup, I remember. There was just no way he wasn't going to knock him dead. Yeah. You still fly? Not in years. You were one of the best. They were gods. Oh, say, did you ever get my letter about the reunion? No. Uh, I know a whole lot of them were never delivered. I got the addresses from the Air Force. You can imagine how old they are. Here. England? Yeah. The old base. The 323rd Bombardment Squadron. Oh, say, you could do me a tremendous favor. Uh, do you remember a guy? <laughs> he was in your crew for a while. Uh, Jiggs Queerly. My God, is he still alive? I don't know. He was a tough kid. The latest address I got for him is right here in Chicago. So if you could uh, find him, get him to come. Jiggs Queerly. Mm. Listen, I gotta run. Uh, I'll see you in England, right? Well, I don't know. I, I'm pretty busy. I like to think about it. Ah, don't think about it. Come. Hmm? We need you.
looking for somebody? Quilly? Quilly? What do you what do you want him for? Hello, Jiggs. Say no to a chaser. How the hell did you find me? I've been trying to remember. You were still over there, weren't you? When I got rotated home? Hoss, hoss. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Yeah, I was there too. <laughs> Shit. I was on. Oh. Maybe three, four crews after yours. <laughs> Think it was the second one we did on the channel. I got out. Me and the bombardier, two of us got out. Now I remember, nice kind of guy, too. I think he got killed. Yeah, hey, you gotta hear this. One crew had tangled with the co-pilot, huh? They stick me in a guardhouse. Two whole weeks, I didn't have to fly. I know. That was my co-pilot. Yours? Yeah. Hey, right, yeah, I remember. Oh, shit, that was a good crew. Good crew. The whole group's having a reunion. I mean, how, how come they come looking for me? Do you remember a gunner named Nat Barsky? I think he was with uh, Ed Taylor's crew. I guess he's sort of uh, putting this thing together. What thing? The reunion. Another group? Mm. Look, if you had to, you suppose you could uh, lay off that for a few days? Who the hell do you think you are? You know, you're 100% right. Jiggs, take care of yourself. Whatever's left, he'll use up. Right. Hey, where are you going? I mean, why? What did I say? Nothing. Come on, I want to show you something. Why? Wow, I want to show you something. What? Come on. Take a look inside. Well, huh? Well, come on, Richard. Open that up. Yes. I remember your silver star. How would you like to go to England? I tell you, you'd love it. Best thing in the world. Okay, let's see all of it. Uh, look okay? Okay. Jake, we're on our way.
Carl. Carl. What? Why? What's the matter? You was a hundred miles away. England. Carl, can I ask you something? Sure. You know, like a favor? Sure. All those guys coming back and everything. You know, guys like you, Bosky. I mean, like, you know, you're all gonna be kind of looking at each other. Huh? Hey, <laughs> how you doing? Me? Hey, I'm an oil, you know. There's Louis, stocks and bonds. Jimmy, yeah, he's here. He's doing great. Owns a couple of airlines. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I mean, air ain't gonna make no difference to nobody. I mean, if uh, nobody knows it, will Robbie, huh? There'll be some drinking. Hey, T. If I go crazy, maybe a coke. As far as I'm concerned, you're an independent contractor. Custodial services. I don't know. I don't know. Who ever heard of a guy like you? I, I mean, it's not like we were buddies or something. You was an officer, I was a dog face. I was only in your outfit for a while. I mean... You gotta be. We fought a war together, didn't we? You won a medal on my crew, didn't you? You know what it was we said about them, don't you? What would that be? Oversexed, overpaid, and overreal. <laughs> Ah, but then what's he going to talk about? <laughs> it isn't the dear old 332nd, I don't care. 323rd. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> good seat. This is good. Uh, <laughs> there's Ski. My God, there's Colonel Begar. Yeah, look, uh, why don't you go ahead? I'll, I'll go on. Come on. You can't not talk to people, you know? I know. I'm you get one under your belt, from there on it's a piece of cake. Ain't what I need under my belt. Uh uh. Forget about that. Come on. Yeah, I wonder how many of these fellas think of the time Hello? they put in over here is the best time of their lives. Oh, no two Thank ways you. about it. Hey, Colonel. Now you remember Carl Hostrup. Colonel Howard. Hosh Hostrup. Best flyer I ever had. You look just fine. So do you. Hey. That isn't Jig Squealy, is it? It's himself. Colonel Big Eye. Hey, where, where the heck you been all these years, Colonel? Looking for you, Jiggs. I didn't do it. Father, <laughs> don't believe anything to tell you. I was in church the whole time. <laughs> you was there, remember? Huh? Jiggs, you may not have been the best soldier in the Army. Me? But 
but you were the fellow that pulled the tail gunner out of Haas's plane when he crash landed. On fire. Most of the crew shot up and bailed out. We had to get him out of the guardhouse to give me a silver star. Right, Carl? That's right. This just wouldn't have been the same without you being here. <clears throat> Thanks. Thank you, Carl. Great. Great to have you with us, Jiggs. Come on. Did you want something? I was looking for a Mrs. Sally Grant. Used to be a Wells? Yes, that's right. Well, they told me at the post office that... She's in the shop. Oh, I see. Where would that be? Back in the village? No, in Elford. Maybe I'll try again later. Um, should I say that you called? No, that's all right. I'll be going that way in a minute, if you'd like a lift. Well, yes, thank you. <laughs> Remember them Polish guys used to come into town? <laughs> yeah, they walked like they were still there on a plow, like this. Yeah, you're not kidding. Mm -hmm. Are you coming, Ray? <laughs> Like a, uh, you, you, you got something like a, like a lemonade? Or lemonade, sir? Certainly, sir. Uh, hey, Matt, can, can you, I'm sorry, can you hold, hold the lemonade? I'll, I'll take, a, I'll take a scotch. <clears throat> One scotch? Certainly, sir. With ice, sir? Uh, no. One scotch, sir. 65 pence, please. When I heard the Yanks were coming, I thought, God preserve us. No offense, mind you. Not much, anyway. If it hadn't been for the demo on Sunday, I'd have cleared out for the weekend. Sorry. Are you one of them, then? Yanks? One of them back for the great reunion. That's me, veteran. The old warrior. We'll probably get drunk and disorderly and make fools of ourselves and be gone before you know it. What's happening on Sunday? A big demonstration against the missile bases. I gather that's something you're interested in. 
What's your connection with Sally? She's my grandmother. Grandmother? How do you know her? What, from the war? Ah, uh, it's pretty stupid, I guess. She probably won't even remember me. darling. I brought a friend, an old pal. Well, what do you mean you brought an old? Kind of a dirty trick. My God. Is he the one? Hello, Grandad. Here, you. Out. Out you go. Uh, On your feet. You're not in America now, you know. What do you mean? What do I mean? I mean, I want to see you through that door. Oh, come on. Come on. Hey, These are decent dance? people in here. What are you doing? Come on. Thanks, love. Are you all right? Look, you've always helped me when I've been down. I'm not down. Bloody well right you're not. You're sure now, because I can go out there and tell him to buzz off. Oh, I know. I should have told him you'd moved to the Fiji Islands. Oh, Sheila. I haven't come over all soft just because some man I knew a hundred years ago happens to show up. He's not some man. That's right. Without that man, I wouldn't have you. You are all right, aren't you? Oh, come on. connection. I guess I'm it. What's that make me then? Part yank? No more than you were this morning. No more than what? Sheila and I were just getting acquainted. Nice to have met you. You're leaving? Alas. Are you going to be late? No, not particularly. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Are you really that beautiful young man? Not at all. Well, at some point you knew you were pregnant. I had a right to know. Did you? What would you have done? 
Well, I'd like to think that I'd have... Even now, you're not sure. Where is she now? She was killed. July the 9th, 1968. She and her husband. Motorbike accident. Oh. You couldn't tell her much, not Susan. You know, she, you couldn't say, be careful to her. Not that she had a lot of reason to listen to me. I wasn't around that much, was I? Well, God knows I wasn't. Well, if I'm not to blame, how could you be? I had to work for a living. You didn't even know. 23 years old. Bright girl. What did she look like? Like you, Carl. She was too pretty for her own good. Okay. Sheila was three. I took her in. Oh, I know, I thought I was being noble. It was my duty, all that. But really, in truth, I wanted to see if I couldn't do something right for a change. You have a lot to be proud of. What does she know about me? You were a soldier. That's about all. It sounds so... So ordinary. But it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Well, I've, I've told you about myself. Now, what about you? Chicago, businessman, two wives, no children. Oh, that's name, rank, and serial number. Nothing else. It was a very organized life. No children. Did that just happen, or is it something you decided on? My second wife already had some kids. I wanted one more, mine, but uh, she didn't. After a while, I stopped making an issue of it. And the first? Am I being too nosy? No. Oh, hell, we couldn't. You're asking me questions that I'm not sure that I have answers for. It's not important. Well, that means you don't give a damn. If I didn't give a damn, I wouldn't have asked. I didn't know that. You were telling me about yourself. Well, there's not much more to it. I worked hard and successful. I'm 60 years old, I find that I'm a grandfather. I had a child. I have a grandchild who doesn't like me very much. Oh, she's in a men are the enemy phase. Besides, you're the wicked seducer who led me down the garden path. Is that what I did? I have to go. What are you doing for dinner? Oh, cottage cheese and an apple before my exercise class. You don't need exercise. Oh. What about tomorrow? Oh, I work tomorrow. Saturday? Yes. Anyway, aren't you supposed to be doing whatever it is you do at a reunion? Isn't that why you came here? How about breakfast? You're serious? I think I am. Well, if you come at eight, I'll give you bacon and eggs and a coffee. Goody. <laughs> and if you're too hungover, don't worry about it. I'll quite understand. That's a very civilized invitation. Only make that tea. I remember the coffee. <laughs> Hey, Lieutenant. Hey, Hoss. It's Joe Silly. Joe. <laughs> hey, it really is, isn't it? Great. Yeah, have you seen any other guys? No, I haven't seen anybody. Where are they all? Well, they're just down there. Come on. Come on. Willie, I'll see you in a couple of minutes. I was kind of hoping that Kenny Donigan would be here. Do you remember him? <laughs> that was some good crew, huh? Come on, let's go. Holy smokes, he's here. Haas! You're gonna <laughs> for sore eyes! 
Duffy, how are you? Oh, at least you recognize me. <laughs> hey, now, who do you think this guy is? George. <laughs> how you doing, Hoss? Who knows, George? Just trying to keep her straight and level. Say hello to the wife. Mrs. Kloss? I sure have heard a lot about you. You didn't believe any of it, I hope. Why? You sounded real great. Well, in that case, it's all true. <laughs> <laughs> George always said, he said, you were the best pilot in the whole war. So what did he tell you about his co-pilot? Well, I believe he said you were a little reckless. <laughs> Isn't that what you said, George? Mr. Hostra. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you got a minute, Joe? Yes, I will see you all at dinner, huh? Hey, where are you going, Hoss? The colonel wants to ask me how to win the war. <laughs> Can you make it? It's about two blocks. He's fine. <laughs> Maybe I ought to. No, no, no. They don't want you there. You saw it, me. It's all my fault. I should have stuck with you. Okay. Let's go. Hey, you remember that guy? What's his name? Dorflinger. Oh, yeah. Fred Dorflinger. Fred Dorflinger. Had a great big piece of Betty Graham. Peter Hayward. Whoever. He said he met her, and he said she told him to look him up after the war. <laughs> Can you imagine? Fred Dorflinger. Peter Hayward. <laughs> Those were the damn shit. Is that a fact? Best. The war and all, huh? You're goddamn right. God, you haven't changed a bit, Tweely. You were an asshole then, too. Yeah. Carl, how am I going to get upstairs? We'll walk you. Someone will see me. Oh, you tied one on. So what? No, no, no. Come say on. I was sick, will you? Carl, please. Don't, don't tell him I was drunk. I just said I was sick. OK. okay. For something you ate. Bad ice. That will be uh, two pounds, 30 pigs. There you go. Thank you. That's all right. <laughs> Ah, here we are. Yes, sir. Yeah, what I remember, like yesterday, was the feeling, the atmosphere in the briefing room when they told us we were going to move in. It was the worst moment of my life. Yeah. A lot of men got killed. And yet, here we are. Why? What are we celebrating? A great period in our lives. You know why? Yes, sir. Because we worked as we were young. You got any family, Duff? Yeah, a couple of kids. One lives in the Denver area, and the other one, uh, well, she kind of... Well, the last time I heard, she was out in California someplace, some cult or other. <laughs> Your wife, she, uh, she, she didn't want to come? Uh... No, not really. Hey, George, you got any kids? Three. Seven grandchildren. <laughs> How do you think I could leave the farm? <laughs> yeah, well, from what I read, farming ain't that great these days. We're going broke, producing too much food in a world of hungry people. Hmm. Well... I was 17 years at Jones and Lockett at Steel Mill. I was four when the last date. Uh, July 81, they laid me off. You know, the wife words of that helps. But when I heard about this thing, I said, look, there's no way I'm going to get over there. And my wife kicked my tail and she said, Joe, go. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Good for her. Uh, do you remember the cute ass? I'm the daughter of that guy who owned that... Uh... Farm that was down the road from it? I was Sally. Uh, Sally Wells. Uh, yeah. Sally Wells, yeah. right? And she was one of those uh, uniform farmers. <coughs> I remember Sally. Yeah. You remember yeah. Sally? Yeah. Sally. Oh. Now, the truth, Hoss. The two of you were some kind of item then, right? Did you ever get into that? A shit pot full of guys wanted to. <laughs> the last time a guy asked me that question, I took a poke at him. Hey, that was Kenny Donegan. I thought he was your closest buddy. We were. It was the day I shipped out. 
he came over to say goodbye, and uh, he said, before you go, it's been killing me. Did you ever get into her pants? Jesus, Hans, I, re I remember that. You really clobbered him. I never saw him after that. Hell of a way to say goodbye to a friend. I was hoping he'd be here so I could tell him I'm sorry. I bet she's here. You know, Hoss, you look like a prosperous man to me. I'm with AGR Industries, Chicago. Big company. Big company. I think I heard of them. Probably have. They have divisions. They make everything from fertilizer to tennis rackets. Well, what do you do there? I don't do anything there, Joe. I'm kidding you. I did. Up until a few months ago, I was a division president. Cushy as it comes, right? I uh, resigned. At my level, they don't fire you. They ask you for your resignation. My wife was sensitive about it, though. She uh, waited a few weeks before she walked out of me. So what the hell happened? It's called arithmetic. They were paying me $100,000 a year plus bonuses. They hire two kids out of business school, pay them 35 grand a piece. Bingo. They save themselves $30,000. At least you have a skill. If the industry ever picks up, I mean, who's going to hire a 60 year old executive? I wouldn't. You can send me twice a day to the port of Calais, but don't send me to the road. Morning, Carl. Well, you're out bright and early. Well, I jogged two miles already. I was going to say I don't believe you, but I'm afraid I do. <laughs> I'm going to see if we can go visit the old airfield and the cemetery. You want to drive out with me this afternoon? Yeah, sounds good. Fine. I'll meet you here at 3 o'clock. Right. Hi, gentlemen. Good morning. How you doing? Hey, I wonder what he smokes. Hey. Hey. You are looking better. I feel better. Yeah, I feel a lot better. I bet you don't get fresh chives with your eggs in Chicago. After I left, did you ever go out with a pilot named Kenny Donegan? I didn't go out with anybody after you left. Not for a long time. Who's this? Who's what? This. Oh, well, that's Sheila. Yours truly. That's a friend. Or an ex-friend. Yours? Yes, mine. What can I do? Well, you can drink your juice and oh, pour the tea. You know, uh, I was thinking, if you had tried to find me, it might not have been so simple. I didn't want to find you. I'd made my decision, and that was that. It wasn't easy for me. Oh, I can imagine. Depriving a father of his child. Do you really think that was what I was doing? Deliberately depriving you of your child? Well, maybe you were just trying to make it simpler for me. Not backing me up against a wall. Eat your eggs. How could you be so sure that I wouldn't have... Well, you knew me pretty well. You knew how I felt about you. Oh, stop it, Carl. Why are you doing this? Why go into all this now? I was 18 years old. I had to make my decisions by myself, and I made them. And you want to tell me now that I did the wrong thing? You know, 
There were so many guys. I'm still amazed that I was the one. Who... Won the heart of the fair maiden? Yes, damn it. I thought you were a gentleman. I was. An officer and a gentleman, by an act of Congress. You were the most beautiful young man I ever saw. wanted to do was die. That's all. Just die. Oh, you were sick, but you aren't that sick. Oh, oh, I was so ashamed. A girl dresses up in every pathetic scrap of finery she owns and swamps herself with some tuppenny halfpenny perfume and practices in front of the mirror how to be so incredibly sophisticated he wouldn't be able to resist her. And then, <laughs> then she has three gins and ends up with him holding her head while she's sick in the road. <laughs> in the absolute middle, what do you call it? The crown of the damned road. Oh, God, what a night. Oh, I was sure you'd never want to see me again. <laughs> and I was so sure that there wasn't another girl in the world who looked so pretty throwing up. <laughs> I'll be back bloody funny at nine o'clock in the morning. Oh, my God, look at the time. Oh, I haven't done the dishes. Oh, I'll do them. Oh, thanks, love. Well, I'm sorry, but I do have to go. Business is business. I can't remember when I've laughed so much. <laughs> Neither can I. Thanks for breakfast. Any time you're in the neighborhood. It's the best offer I've had in a while. Bye. Bye. Bye, love. Bye. Well, Sally, you know about the dance tonight? Yes, well, I, I heard there was some big do. Will you be my date? <laughs> Is that what they say in America? I'd love to be your date. Be nice. Tea? No, thank you. Can I help you clean up? If you like. So what was it like then? Old times. It was different. I had a lot to think about last night. How would you like to go for a ride with me this afternoon? Where to? Why, does it matter? Tell you what. I'll go with you this afternoon if you come with me after breakfast. Come where? Why? Does it matter? How do you like it? Is it always this busy? We're getting ready for the demonstration tomorrow. Oh, where is that? Green and Common. One of yours. One of my what? One of your missile bases. Oh, and what's the nature of this demonstration? You're not there to show support. I can understand that. Oh, good for you. You're uh, asking them not to litter up the countryside? We're not asking them anything. We're telling them to pack up and go home. And take their missiles with them. That's the idea. You're a pacifist. I'm against war. I'm against war. But I guess I believe in defending myself. The way your chaps burned our villages in Vietnam to save them? My chaps? Do you take personal responsibility for everything that every Englishman does anywhere, Ireland, or are you just against American weapons? Against Americans? I'm against all nuclear weapons. Yours happen to be on my doorstep. Well, I guess you have the right to say we don't want them. Get them out of here. Thank you. I'm sorry, but I've got work to do. Somebody will be going by Ferber in a bit. They'll drop you. 
I thought we had a date this afternoon. I know you're busy, but uh, I don't have much time. I'll work until two. Perfect. Why don't I call Sally and ask her to come with us? She's working. She's all alone. Do you care all of a sudden? I'm sorry. <coughs> oh, uh, Dr. Barsky. Nathan. Uh, this is Sheila. I've asked her to come with us. Sheila Sawyer. Hi. I'll just uh, run and make a phone call. OK. Thank you. Yeah, I'm fine. You see that plane over there, the AT-6? More dreams have been made and broken than that plane. I'll tell you. Back here before. Gloomy place. And yet, the Acropolis, the Taj Mahal, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. None of them was as glorious as this place when you got back after a mission. Did they make the doctors fly there? No, I was fresh out of high school. How old are you? Nineteen. Oh, nineteen. I have my 19th birthday right here. Besides, I'm not that kind of a doctor. You know, when you first came into the house two weeks ago, I almost didn't recognize you. The ski I knew was, well, he was a loner, quiet. To be honest with you, you didn't leave much of an impression. <laughs> How come all this, uh, you know, college president, lecture tour. No, well, I was there. It was hiding. It sure was. <laughs> no, until I went in the Army, I'd never been out of our neighborhood. Where I grew up, it was 100% Jewish. So, in the Army, I was like a stranger in a strange land. I can remember the towns. Kingman, Arizona, Lubbock, Texas. Like the old joke. <laughs> but ain't you ever seen a Yankee? <laughs> Only it was no joke. So I decided, you do not open your mouth. I'll tell you something I never told anybody. When we were pulling missions, I was afraid. I mean afraid. Everybody was afraid. I didn't know that. You want to know what I was really afraid of? Terrified. I was afraid that, in my fear, I'd disgrace myself. That I'd screw up and get my crew killed. And then they'd say, eh, what do you expect from a Jew? Heroism? If that's how you really felt, then you were a hero. And you thought he was quiet. 
Well, look who we have here. Who's this? Come on, I'll introduce you. Hello. Hello, love. Is someone looking out at the shop for you? Yes. Ski, you remember Sally Wells? Ah, uh, Sally. Oh, I certainly do. How are you, Sally? Ski? Nat Barsky, 40 years on. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> have you been here before? Well, you know I haven't. Well, let me show you around. All right. Sheila's her granddaughter. Sweet kid. Tough. I've seen that a lot of times. No, never. Oh, would you like to? Yes, yes, I'd love to. Gave their lives in the service of their country and who sleep in unknown graves. Did you know Ray Benson? Sure. Eddie Chester? Cooper? Kenneth A. Donning. Sorry. What for? If you can't cry for them, who can you cry for? I'm glad you came. Me too. An afternoon with a bunch of sentimental old men? You don't trust sentiment. Do I? I, uh, don't think I've even thought about it. Somehow, it's even more impressive this time than I remember it. You don't like it. It glorifies war. I like it when you say what's on your mind. It's hard not to wonder. Here we are, two men, I suppose it's fair to say, of a reasonably solid achievement. 
We've lived whole lives, rich lives. What might some of these fellows have added if they'd been spared, you know, given the kind of opportunities we were given? How much human potential do you suppose was buried in these graves? Human potential? Does that matter? Uh, you're saying that uh, what they might have achieved if they'd lived isn't important? What I'm saying is, uh, I don't think this is the time. No, or the that's place. all right. If this man's death is a tragedy, it's not because of what he might have been, but of what he was. He might have achieved something. What about him? His mum, his dad, his, his lover. Do you think they cried over him because now he wasn't going to be the bloody president? I'll walk back to the hotel, Ski. Thanks. See you later. Well, what do you think? What about? That's probably more Americans than you've seen in a short lifetime of trashing Americans. They're all right. But shall I tell you what I really think about them? I think you're going to. Even when they're remembering they're dead, they're either too insensitive or too stupid to know the evil that's been done in their names. Like preserving a way of life that you and your slogan-spouting friends find pretty damn comfortable? I mean, like getting ready to blow up the human race. What's the matter with you people? There's a cemetery back there full of young men, and all you can think about is bombs. Any problem in the world, send the troops. Send guns, kill somebody, blow us all up. I think you're all insane. No, you don't. Because you don't think at all. If you ever had an honest-to-God idea of your own, you wouldn't know what to do with it. You're all mouth, kid. You're full of crap, is what you are. Why don't you come? You can come along later. No, thank you. Why not, Sheila? Why not? Not with him there. Not with any of them. Well, it's only a dance. I don't know how they can have a dance after everything today. It'd be like dancing at a funeral. Oh, you take everything too seriously. Did you take the war seriously? Yes, of course I did. Everybody did. So seriously you went to bed with him? Yes, it was serious. 
Love is a very serious thing. If it was love, that is. Oh, you're too young to know. I'm the same age as you were then. Well, you grow up quickly in a war. There is a war. That's what nobody seems to realize. The old men are still at war, don't you understand? Anyway, the most serious thing is death. I like the dress. Oh, God, it's awful. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Look at it. It's perfectly all right. No, it's no good at all. Well, I shan't go, that's all. What's the matter with it? But it, it, it's all wrong. No, I'm not going. I, I don't want to make a fool of myself. Gran, what's the matter? I'm frightened. What are you frightened of? Come on, let's have a look at it. You look just like Mummy. Sally, you know my friend, Jiggs Queeley? No, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, hi, Sally. You remember George Kloss? Mr. Kloss? Well, we don't. Nice to see you, man. And uh, Joe Sillett? Boy, you two still look great together. Before we do anything else, I know we all, all of us who have come back, want to thank our Fairborough friends for their first-rate hospitality. Somebody told me, this is going back a few weeks, somebody told me that not everybody in this town was real excited about us coming back here. <laughs> I told them, I said, oh, believe me, you don't have anything to worry about. These guys are in bed with a glass of warm milk by 9 o'clock. Speak for yourself, girl. At ease. Now, I'd like to turn this over to the, to the one man who, more than any other individual, put in all the hard work to make this reunion such a really... Outstanding success. Our own staff sergeant, now Dr. Nathan Barsky. Thank you all for, uh, for being here. Oh, I, I have a hunch that you would agree with me that uh, 
What we want to do is enjoy ourselves. Laugh a little, cry a little. How about drink a little? Well, <laughs> so. <laughs> but what we don't want to do is to listen to a whole lot of speeches. You said it! Well, I just want to say that uh, uh, over the years, I've had the privilege of uh, being involved with a good many functions like this that bring people together. Not one, ever, has meant more to me than this reunion has. Uh, uh, now, of course, I know we're all here to uh, renew old friendships. But I think that there's something more than that. I looked it up. Of all the air crews that were stationed here, less than one-tenth survived the war. So that by coming here, inevitably, we remember our comrades who died in battle. We remember their names. We picture their faces. And when we do that, we do something important. Because we share just a small portion of the lives we cherish, cling to, with those very young men who, so long ago, so long ago, so reluctantly, laid their lives down. Thank you. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Freddie Gone, bringing you the sort of music that'll bring your memories back. You young people have a good time. about your argument with Sheila this afternoon. She keeps her guard up, but I think I'm getting a few in. You make it sound like a fight. That's what it is. Until two days ago, you didn't know she existed. I don't see why it matters so much. You didn't see her face. It was as if I had hit her. She'll get over it. She's a child. Yeah. She just can't resist my charm. I know the feeling. It wring your neck. God, what a waste. Oh, Carl, please. It's just easier for me to blame you than to admit that I had it all. I walked away from it. Away from you. Yes, you did. Son.
remember me? I'm the drunk you tossed out yesterday. I throw the bum out. You know why I was drunk? No, I don't, and I don't care either. <laughs> you don't care, huh? I'm an alcoholic. You're looking at one, an alky. It's amazing, huh? It's amazing. I'm a hatch, pal. Relax. Ginger ale. You're doing good, old buddy. I must leave now. We can still get a drink at the hotel. What about it? Oh, Sally, yes. Jack and I are leaving now. Uh, can we give you a lift? No. Uh, yes, thanks. I, I won't be a minute. They go my way. It's been fun. I don't want you to go. But it's late. Do you think this is Chicago? We're country... Stay with me. Don't go home tonight. Carl. Please. There's no war, and we're not kids. Stay with me. Carl. Carl. Let's drink too much and ride a train and act crazy. Be sick in the middle of the road. Sure. <laughs> Maybe. Why not? I'm asking you. But I can't just... This is a village. I live here. What about... What? My house? Well, we'll go to London. The Savoy. I haven't been to the Savoy. It's too far. Anyway, the last train went about an hour ago. All right, we'll go to that little inn in Cambridge. We'll take your... No. We'll go in a taxi. Only way to go, Sally, in style. Sally, are you ready? Um, no, all right, thanks. I've... I've changed my mind. Who would believe it? Just like old times. Well, this, this whole thing is incredibly romantic. Well, if nothing else, who has an adventure at our age? What's incredible is that 40 years have passed. Something happened at time. For a while, it got lost or confused. 
Not anymore. Do you know that I used to think about killing myself? What happened to that beautiful young man? He blew it. Sorry. So am I. Why am I telling you things that I would never tell anyone else in a million years? I don't threaten you. So you say things. You make it sound like it's all going to go away, like... The sun will come up and we'll put on our clothes and go outside and nothing's different. You have a, a wonderful memory. I want to stay with you. I want to watch Sheila become a woman. I want to help her. God knows I don't know how. How does a grandfather? Carl. I want to make it up to her. All I need is a little time. There must be some way that I can... It's not Sheila. Sheila's all mixed up about you. She doesn't know what to make of you. I am the problem, though, Carl. I guess this one's on me. No. No, you... You've given me something so precious. No big deal. Carl, my life's in order. Your life is in order? What does that mean? What about my life? What's that got to do with anything anyway? I'm not trying to change your life. Listen to yourself. I wanted to say those same words to you 40 years ago. But it's different now. I'm different now that I'm here. I'm asking you. What am I asking? What am I talking about anyway? Do you know? <laughs> oh, it's okay. Shh. It's okay. One has to go all the way back to 1945 to find a time when we were united, when our island people truly pulled together. Well, of course, it was wartime. But it isn't simply war, is it, that unites us? There must have been some unique quality about that war. What it was, of course, is it was the last good war. It's the last time we were all agreed about a very important aspect of war, who the enemy is. Maybe we'll never be all together about that again. Maybe the day of the good war is over. Maybe in international affairs, good and evil, right and wrong, all over. Finished. Done. One man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. But those of us who remember 1939 to 1945, what testimony we can give to the human spirit Amen. You didn't find what you were looking for? Joe, if you think I know what I'm looking for. Well, there's not too much of that around. You know, people who know what they're looking for. It was fun last night. Yeah, it was a good party. <laughs> Boy, did I get wasted. You know, I used to drink like that. Get up the next morning at 6 o'clock, do a full day's work, and not think a damn thing about it. Getting old, Hoss. What, do you want to live forever? Well, sure, don't you? Joe, how come we never kept in touch? I mean, we just let the whole thing go. I... Well, why would we? 
I mean, if it wasn't for the war, where would two guys like you and me ever meet? Yeah. Good to see you, though, Carl. Hey, guys, wait for me, will you? <laughs> Get out before the plate comes around, right? <laughs> I'll tell you, over the years, I eat so many of them church dinners, Christmas, Thanksgiving. I figure my heartfelt gratitude made so many of them church folks happy, they in hardly no way they can pay that debt to me. Real benefactor, huh? In my way, in my way. But I ain't afraid to admit I went in there to say something today I don't think I said before my whole life. Thank you, Lord. Something special? I don't know. Maybe I'm a new man. See what you've done, Carl? What's going on? I don't know, Carl. All of a sudden, it's a different ball game. I feel real great, you know what I mean? Kind of like strong. Sounds good. <laughs> like last night, I come right out and said it. I'm an alcoholic. I've never done that before. Congratulations. I hope you mean that, Carl. Oh, by that I mean is, I know you wasn't doing real great, at least till you saw your friend Sally. So giving me a helping hand when I, I was lower than a snake's belly made you feel like a real uh, sport. Well, that's all right. I mean, there ain't nothing wrong with it. Uh, take it any, any way you can get it. That's what I say, you know what I mean? But, but Carl, if I ain't down any longer, you see what I mean? Yes, I do. I do see what you mean. Yes, sir. I woke up this morning and I laid there thinking, Jigs, it ain't the same. New ball game. You're going to get out of bed this morning and look it right in the eye. You ain't done that in 30 years. 30 years. There goes my finest achievement. He'll be back on the sauce in a week. Could we go someplace where we could uh, talk for a minute? Did you get enough kicks yesterday? I don't usually talk to people like that. Why am I any different? If I could take it back, I would. It won't happen again. You're right, it won't, because I won't let it. Sheila, I just want to say goodbye. It's not going to take... Go home! All right, just go home, the whole bloody lot of you. And take your cruisers with you, because we don't want them. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? Yes! God damn it, but the whole lot of you, all of you. Take a look. The enemy. How long has it been since you've seen him? I mean, really seen him. Take a good look. Well, what do you think? Do I look like somebody who wants to blow up the world? She thinks I do. Damn it, stop thinking that all Americans are goons and idiots. There are probably as many people in my country who don't want those weapons lying around as there are in yours, maybe more. I'm not saying they're right. Maybe those weapons are keeping the peace exactly as they say they are. But there's one thing I do know. You're wrong. You're wrong when you lump together every damn thing you don't like and call it American. If you know me and don't like me, fair enough. But if you don't know me and don't like me, that's just damn foolishness. Come on down before you hurt yourself. Hurt myself? All I want you to do is to come down and have a cup of tea. And you'll feel better. All right. Thank you. Come on, sit down. No, I'm fine. All right. I have to leave. I think you need someone to look after you. where I went to school. I don't think I minded all that much not having a mother and father until the other kids found out. Sheila, at your age, you don't think about uh, what... I'm not doing this very well, but I'm trying to explain what you... the fact of you 
your existence means to me. I'm proud of you. That's crazy, isn't it? I have zero to do with who you are. I do not have zero to do with who I am. You're my grandfather. I'm your flesh and blood. I have no right to ask you for anything. But you know the greatest thing you could do for me? No. What? Have lots of children. And when they're old enough, tell them about their American great-grandfather. Their strange American great-grandfather who stands on the furniture and gives passionate speeches. Are you rich? Am I rich? Well, aren't you a rich American? I have some money. You want some? No. I think you're rich. Me? You have friends, something to believe in. You have all of English history to give you a sense of tradition and continuity. There is one more thing that I would like to add to your assets. You have a grandfather who... He doesn't know how to show it, but... Can you get to love somebody that fast? So what do they call a grandfather in America? Well, I don't know. Cramp? <laughs> how about Cramp? Oh, that sounds old, isn't it? How you doing, Gramp? How you doing, Gramp? Well, you've got things to do, a world to save. Don't laugh at me. It's too easy to laugh. Besides, I have a new responsibility now. A grandfather shows up, walks into my life. Don't you think I might feel something about that as well? It doesn't happen every day. I never thought of myself as a responsibility. I am rich, but you have something I wish I had. It's yours. You can remember a time when there wasn't a bomb. Pretty great. Before your war, no one could destroy the world in 60 seconds. Just look at this. It's an American air base. The tower has a missile guidance system. We believe they have cruise missiles there. They don't admit it, obviously. It's the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. It can't defend us. It simply makes us a target. What a con. I hate it. I hear one of those things, I get a knot in my stomach, wondering if... <sighs> there must be a wonderful feeling when you're up there. Are you a terrific pilot? Me? I couldn't fly one of those things if my life depended on it. But you used to be great, didn't you? For a steam airplane pilot? Not too shabby. <laughs> you can still fly, though, well, can't you? Damned if I know. I'd know. I should think that when you're sort of... You know. Down. When you're down. If I just knew how to fly... Or any time I was down, I'd just... Fly! It must be like being God. Where are you going now? I'm late for the demonstration. I have to get back. 
I'll drop you in town, though. Drop me off at the airfield. Why? Don't you have to leave soon? Just drop me off at the airfield, will you? Here's fine. I'll see ya. Will I? Sure. Graham. You'll see me. Now you go on. Good luck. He's a man, you know. He's an American. <laughs> what happened last night? We went to Cambridge. I thought so. You like him, don't you? Yes, of course I do. You know what I mean. Oh, no, Sheila, don't be silly. Are you going to see him again? No. No, he's gone home, or he's about to. No, he hasn't. He's gone flying. How do you know? Bye. Be careful. I can't figure where he could have got to. Look, will you stop worrying? Yeah, the horse is a big boy. He'll get home. Are you kidding without me taking care of him? Let's see if our hut is still there. Okay. This is it.
Thousands of women are encircling the American nuclear base, protesting against the arrival of cruise missiles. The campaign for nuclear disarmament is expecting that this will be the largest anti-nuclear demonstration seen at this site, a key installation in the overall defense network of NATO. Police reports indicate that this demonstration is peaceful and so far without incident. CND say that this will be the first of many demonstrations they propose to stage at this site.
Please come with us, sir. I'll put the coffee on. Take that tea and it's a date.